the state of California is in a shambles. As you know, why run for governor now? Well, uh, from my point of view, this is a perfect time to run for governor. We are in a deep crisis. 3,000 people a week pick up and leave the state of California each and every week. Uh, we're out of cash. Our public schools are deteriorating. I mean, we're in a really deep hole. Uh, we need fundamental reform. We need to overhaul our tax and our regulatory system. These are normally very difficult reforms to get accomplished, but in a crisis like this, what a great time to run for governor. Uh, to uh, articulate my views on the campaign trail will be fun and exciting thing to do and then when I win I'll have a mandate marching orders from the voters go fix these fundamental structural problems get California back on track now now what's the biggest issue in your opinion facing California what is the, the issue that we have to address if you're governor number one issue is our broken economy you know we have an unemployment rate officially at about twelve and a half percent Unofficially, if you throw in all of the underemployed people who really want full-time jobs but can't get them, and then all the people who just can't find jobs at all and just quit looking, that unemployment rate's closer to 20%. These are depression-level unemployment rates, about 4 million people. So we need to cut taxes across the board in order to stimulate more job growth. I am the only candidate running that's advocating a 10% cut in personal income taxes, corporate taxes, sales taxes, and a 50% cut in capital gains taxes. Now that kind of bold across the board permanent tax cut will attract jobs and investors back to California. That will help us revitalize our economy. That's how we balance the budget. How do you do that with, with the power of special interests in Sacramento that kind of dominate things in Sacramento? Public employee unions, other special interests, how do you, how do you accomplish something like that with them having so much power in our state? Voters are going to have to weigh in. As I run for governor, and I'm going to run for governor uh, in, a, in a way that's never been done before, very specific about my core principles, uh, specific about the solutions for the state of California, and then I'm going to ask voters, you're going to have to send me to Sacramento with a mandate, with these marching orders, because these special interest forces in Sacramento are strong, they'll resist these changes, but in the middle of this deep recession that we're in, when we're out of cash, uh, now's the time to be going to voters from both parties and independents and I'm going to ask them, rally around me here, send me to Sacramento with uh, with the political clout to cut taxes, bring control of the schools back to the lo local level, we'll get jobs back here, we'll reinvigorate our schools. Now's the time in the middle of this train wreck you know, to build a new coalition. I mean we need to take our state back and we need to form a new coalition to do that. No, what do we do about education? We're ranked 48th out of 50 states. How do we fix the education system here? You know, in the 1960s and 70s, we had the best public education system in the country. We know how to educate kids, and we've gone from first to almost worst in a, in a short period of time. So, as you know, I took a year of my life out to volunteer in the public schools so I could understand the conditions firsthand. And I was a public school teacher at Mount Pleasant High School uh, in East San Jose. I taught 12th grade American government, gang members and all, and it, <laughs> it was the hardest thing I've ever done and, and also the most rewarding. But I learned firsthand what the problems are. And the problems have to do with the way the schools are micromanaged by the legislature. Now in the 60s and the 70s, the legislature is pretty much hands off. You know, teachers and educators were able to customize and tailor programs to meet the needs of the local kids. Now they micromanage everything through the state education code. State edu education code are these mandates that they apply uniformly to all 5,000 schools at the same time. That's just nonsense. As governor, I'm going to rip control of the public schools out of the hands of Sacramento politicians. We're going to move it down to the local level, you know, where it belongs and where it used to be. And my passion for local control uh, has led me to be a pioneer in building the charter school movement because charter schools are public schools that are the best example of local control that we have. These are public schools that are granted waivers from all these rules and regulations. And they're blossoming in California. There's over 800 charter schools now in California. I started the California Charter Schools Association, which is the charter school group now in the state of California. And we should learn from the great experience from charter schools that freedom and flexibility you know, leads to much improved academic performance. Let's give all schools the same type of freedom and flexibility that charter schools have. Interesting, interesting. What about uh, our energy needs? What do we do to address the energy problems and needs for the state? Well, right now, uh, it's practically impossible to build a new power plant in California. And let's just be honest about it. If you need to build a new power plant, it's, you, you almost can't get it done. The rules, the regulations, the permits, it just takes years and years and years, and so they don't get built. So where does California get its power now to, uh, to meet, meet our needs? 
turns out, uh, since we haven't been able to build power plants for a long time, we end up importing a lot of our electricity from the Midwest. And ironically, unfortunately, from dirty coal-burning fire plants in the Midwest, and we pump it back here to California. So we end up polluting, you know, the rest of the country because you know we, we don't allow any power plants, clean power plants, to be built here. So I'm in favor of, of rapidly expanding the use of nuclear power in California. Uh, Jerry Brown, when he was governor the last time, many years ago, uh, spearheaded a new law that prohibits building new power plants, new nuclear power plants here. That's got to get changed. You know, we're on fourth generation designs now. Modern nuclear power plants can play a crucial role. They're clean, they're 24-7, there's no new technological breakthroughs required. It'd be a fantastic opportunity for the state to be a pioneer, a leader in building a lot more nuclear power plants to meet our needs in a, in a clean, efficient way. Just like France, of all places. 85% <laughs> of all their electricity, and it comes from nuclear power plants. You know, I never point to France for anything, <laughs> but in the case of nuclear power plants, they've shown us you know, that, that nuclear power is a safe, clean way uh, to generate electricity. And so you know, nuclear power is expanding rapidly in India and China and everywhere, everywhere but here. And that's got to get fixed. France has good food, too. I like the food. Pretty good. Uh, some, food's okay. Some of the food. Uh, anything else you want to share with our viewers, viewers before we go? Well, uh, one last thing. Uh, the overhaul of state government. So I'm the insurance commissioner, you know, one of eight positions elected statewide. When I got to the Department of Insurance three years ago, uh, I went through a top-down review of this $200 million state agency. And there's 400 state agencies in, in Sacramento, so the Department of Insurance is just one of them. And I have a great job. You know, I oversee the entire insurance industry, which is a $160 billion industry, and the work that we do there is very important. But it was a pretty sleepy bureaucracy there. Uh, I did a review of every dollar spent, every program, uh, and it turns out uh, there's a lot of opportunities that we've implemented to clean up the place, to modernize it, to overhaul it. My operating expenses now are down 15% permanently because of this modernization work that we've done. I now have a huge surplus of the Department of Insurance that we're passing back into the economy with tax cuts and fee cuts on insurance agents and brokers that fund my department. This is what I want to do as governor across every single state department and state agency, all 400 of them need to be overhauled and modernized, just the way, I, the way I did it at the Department of Insurance. Well, thank you very much for coming, and thank you for tuning in.